In my last video, I went over how you can jailbreak an iPhone, and I also showed you how you can install Frida on an iPhone. In that video, I also mentioned that I wanted to do some more videos about different iOS hacking techniques, because I've done a lot of things about Android hacking, but I haven't done that much about iOS, and I've gotten some comments in the past asking for more iOS content, so I'm gonna try to do some more of that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your iPhone to work with Burp Suites, so you can intercept traffic from your phone, and then I'm also going to show you how you can bypass SSL pinning on your uh, iPhone. So if the app you're working with has SSL pinning enabled, then you can still intercept that traffic. So the first thing to know is that I'm working with an iPhone 7 running iOS 15.8. And this phone is jailbroken. It's the same iPhone that I jailbroke in the previous video. And also I already have Frida installed on it. And for this video, I'm going to assume that the app you wanna test is actually already installed on the device. For example, if you installed it from the App Store or if you got it from Test Flight or something like that, instead of just getting like an IPA file and having to sideload it onto the device. Because depending on how that by binary is set up that can get kind of complicated with like re-signing the binary and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably make a video about that in the future, but for now I'm just going to assume that the app that you're working with is already on the device. And now the first thing we need to do is download Burp Suite. So we're going to go to portswigger.net and we're going to go to products and we're going to go to the Burp Suite Community Edition. I'm going to assume in this video that you're just gonna be using the community edition. You can get things like Burp Suite Pro, which requires a license. You can get the enterprise edition, but the community edition has plenty of features and will be just fine for what we're going to do in this video. But we're gonna go straight to downloads and we're going to get the version for Mac OS. And another thing, as I mentioned in the last video, I am going to be doing pretty much all of the iOS hacking stuff that I do in these videos on Mac just because there are so many more tools and different things available to you on Mac that are specific to iOS that are either very difficult or in some cases completely impossible to do on either Windows or Linux. So if you're going to do any kind of real hacking or assessments on iOS apps, you really need to have a Mac just because there are too many things available on Mac that you just really need to really do a good job on it but we're just going to download this file. After it downloads the DMG file, then you should be able to install the application. And for some reason, it makes the little window kind of wonky where the icon is in the wrong place for me. But once you see this little window, then you just drag it over to applications. After that install completes, then you should see a new little icon in your applications for Burp Suite Community Edition. And when you launch that, it'll bring up this little menu asking you to create a temporary project in memory, make a new project on disk, or open an existing project. For this video, I'm just going to make a temporary project in memory, so I'm going to hit next and then start burp. Now if I go to the proxy tab and I go to proxy settings, I'm going to change this interface from 127.0.0.1 port 8080 to whatever the specific address is for what the IP for this MacBook is on my network, which in this case is going to be 192.168.1.9. And I'm going to leave the port to 8080, which is usually going to be the default. And now on my iPhone, I need to go to the Wi-Fi settings and I need to go to the HTTP proxy and configure proxy manual and I'm going to set it to the same IP in the port that I just set in my burp settings. So that's server 192.168.1.9 and port number 8080. And I'm going to save and I'm going to close the proxy settings and I'm going to go to my HTTP history and I'm going to open a web browser on my iPhone and I'm just going to go to google.com and I get an error and I show details it says TLS errors. I'll try to visit the site, but it's just not gonna work. Like I'm not getting anything because I'm trying to go through that proxy with Burp Suite, but I don't have the certificate installed on my device. So in order to get that certificate, while the proxy is enabled on my device, I'm going to go to HTTP colon slash slash burp. And now I see this little page comes up that says Burp Suite Community Edition. And up in the top right corner, you see that little bitty button that says CA Certificate. So I'm going to click that. And it says this website is trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? I'm going to allow. Profile downloaded. Review the profile and settings app if you want to install it. I do want to install it. So I'm going to go to settings. 
and it pops up install profile port swigger ca signed by port swigger ca not verified and i'm going to install install again install and now it's verified and now you see it listed under your configuration profile but there is one more step this is a step that i forget all the time i used to all the time every time i had to install a new certificate i would always forget this step but if you tried to intercept traffic here you still would not be able to get any traffic so for this one last step we need to go to general then about and then we're going to scroll down to certificate trust settings and now you see enable full trust for root certificates and that switch is turned off for the port swigger ca so we're going to turn that on root certificate warning enabling this certificate for websites will allow third parties to view any private data sent to websites that's exactly what we want to do with our proxy so we're going to click continue and now we've enabled full trust for root certificates and now if we go back to our web browser you can see we're already getting traffic in our proxy under our http history but if we go to google.com it loads without any problem there's no error messages and we're able to view that traffic you see the request the response and that will also work for applications that are installed on the phone as well and not just through the web browser however one thing you might come across which is something i've covered in a lot of my other videos about android hacking is something called ssl pinning that's another measure that a lot of application developers use to implement in their app just as an extra sort of precaution mitigation for man in the middle attacks. And not all apps will have this. It's kind of up to the discretion of the developer and the people that are putting the app out there on the app store. Some decide to enable it, some don't. There's an argument about whether or not it even does enough to make it worth the trouble of enabling it. Because as I'm about to show you, it is fairly easy to bypass in most cases. But especially in apps that handle sensitive information, for example, like banking apps or like medical apps and things like that, a lot of times you will see SSL pinning enabled. But for this example, I'm gonna use PayPal. And you see when I launched the app, I saw a lot of requests from PayPal come through. So it's not blocking all traffic, but I did create an account to use for this video on PayPal. And if I try to log in with that account, when I hit next to go to the next screen to put in my password, it says something went wrong, try again. And if we look down at the event log, we see errors and it says the client failed to negotiate a TLS connection to api-m.paypal.com, remote host terminated the handshake. So even though we have that certificate installed on our device, we still aren't able to intercept that traffic especially on the login page. Something you might see is a lot of apps will only have that SSL pinning enabled on certain parts of the app, especially during like the login form or after a user has logged in. So actually just launching the app or using the app without logging in won't have any sort of issue with SSL pinning. But once you get past that login page, then you will have SSL pinning issues. To bypass this, I'm going to show you how to do it using Objection, which is a tool I've used for Android apps in the past. But Objection works on top of Frida. It's kind of like a wrapper with some different like scripts and different automation things that it does with Frida. But Frida is sort of like the underlying thing that does all the work for Objection. And like I said earlier in my previous video, I showed how to install Frida using Cilio. It's very easy to do if you want to look at like the last few minutes of that last video. It'll walk you through it pretty quickly. But first, I'm going to make sure I have Frida installed on my MacBook. So I'm going to run pip3 install Frida tools. And if I look at the Frida version, I have 16.1.10. And if I look at the version that I have installed on my device, it also says 16.1.10, so there should be no issue there. I've mentioned it before in other videos, but if you ever have problems with Frida where you're trying to run commands and just things aren't working right on either iOS or Android, there's a good chance that your problem is a version mismatch. So just make sure that the version of Frida that you have installed on your mobile device and the version of Frida you have installed on your MacBook or your laptop or whatever you're dealing with, those versions match because that version mismatch is the source of a lot of issues. But now that I know I have Frida installed, I'm also going to install Objection. So I'm going to run pip3 install Objection. I also already had that installed, but if you didn't, that's the command you would run. So now we need to find the package name for the PayPal app that I'm going to be working with. So to do that, I'm going to run Frida-PS-Capital-U-Lowercase-I-A. 
And of course, that's also making sure that the iPhone is connected to my MacBook over USB. That's kind of an important step. And when I run that little smoke test with the Frida-PS, I see PayPal and I see the package name is com.yourcompany.capitalppcapitalcclient. So now I'm going to run objection-g com.yourcompany.capitalppclient explore. So now when I run this, it's going to hook that process for that application with that package name, and then it's going to launch that app on my phone. So I see that the agent was injected and responds okay, and here's the package name that I'm working with, client, and I see that the PayPal app relaunched on my phone. So now I'm gonna run a command that is available with objection, which is iOS SSL pinning disabled. And when I run that, it takes a couple seconds and then it hooks the frameworks and finds the proper libraries and different things in the application that are doing that SSL pinning and hooks them, and now it's going to do that work in the background to make sure that SSL pinning is not an issue. And once again, I'm going to try to log in with that email address that I made an account for, and I'm going to click next. And this time I don't get that error, and instead it's asking for my password. So I'm going to put in my password. And this time it logged me in. I didn't have any sort of errors or anything. And all this text you see here is Objection and Frida doing that work to make sure that the SSL pinning is not actually doing its job and you're able to bypass it. And if we look back at Burp Suite, we see that we're getting this traffic and uh, we're able to intercept it. And if we want to mess with it and change some of the parameters or do any sort of like injection attacks or anything like that, that you would do on a normal security assessment for a mobile application, application, you can do that by looking at the network traffic in Burp Suite, even though it had SSL pinning enabled. But let me know if there are any other things about iOS hacking that you want me to take a look at. I'm going to try to make at least a few more videos on some other topics about iOS hacking. Since I've done so much stuff about Android, I figured it was about time that I do some more videos about iOS hacking. But let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to cover, and I'll try to do my best to do that.